Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Olette and Casey Berman. Hi, everyone. Casey Berman and Adam Olette with the Love or Leave the Law podcast. Thank you again for joining us for this episode. So happy to have you. Um, as you know, we've been talking about the seven keys of how to fall back in love with the law. And today we're talking about key number seven, which is your beliefs. Uh, we're going to expand on this in further episodes. There's a ton here. Um, but what has really hit me recently, Adam and I were talking about this before, and I've talked about this with others, is this idea of that the results you're getting in your life right now, the results you're getting right now in your life are the results of the belief system that you have inside of you. Let me say that again. When you look externally and the results that you have in your life, professionally, personally, and so on, this is the results of the belief system that you have inside of you, what you believe, the programming that you have, and so on. And so I want to open that up because that was a real momentous thing for me to kind of hear it that way. I've been working on that since, since Adam and I kind of discussed that. We're going to dive into that today about looking at our challenges and then understanding how that turns into results. And we're going to expand this. Don't worry. We're going to expand this more into, into other episodes to get into more depth and, and to help everyone out. But Adam, I want to throw this out here. You, this, was, this was a real eye-opening for me, but, but unpack this for us. I mean, the results we're getting today, I'm saying this for the third time because it was so important to me. The results we're getting are the results of the belief system we have inside of us. Unpack that for us. Yeah, and, and this is interesting, Casey, because we've spent, this is going to be two hours on beliefs total in uh, four different episodes. And why yeah. are we spending so much time here? Because very few of you, including me and Casey, we didn't know this. We don't know yeah. this. And so when I found these ideas around 12, 13 years ago, a little bit earlier than that, but when I really started working with these ideas, I found that this was it. This is like the magic bullet for any of us to start to, when you talk about let's unpack this, let, let's unpack it because this is key number seven as far as I'm concerned. And, and this is one of the most important keys to fall back in love with the law or either fall in love with the law. Uh, most of us have never been in love with the law. Some of us don't even like the law. And so this is the most important thing. Because once I started learning about this, Casey, my world just started yeah. to change in every way possible. Yeah. And it continues to open up because as we unpack our belief systems and as we unpack our beliefs themselves individually, um, what happens is we start to look at where, where did I get these beliefs? We start to question, how do, how do I have this in me? And, and then, yeah. then the bigger part of this is, how can I start to believe something new? How can I believe something that I want to believe that's not a belief that stems from our parents, society, TV, our family? Um, and today, we're going to talk about global beliefs. And these are yeah. beliefs that most of us and I, I would venture to say that everybody listening to this has these beliefs in them. And then we're going to talk a little bit, whether it's in this episode or in another episode where we continue this discussion, because it, it's a discussion like I, I've told you, Casey, when yeah. you look at what your belief systems are and your be individual beliefs, it's like peeling the layers of an onion. And if you've ever really looked at the layers of an onion, there is a million of them. And yeah. so you really start to peel away these layers and you start to look at it. And part of me back in the day, and sometimes still, when I find another belief system in, in those layers that I'm delving into, I start to get pissed. Yeah. It's like, man, yeah. how in the hell do we all believe this bullshit? Because it is. It's and, garbage. And when we focus our attention on these beliefs and perpetuate these beliefs, then that's where our focus is going. And that's what happens in our life around us. I heard a funny story. I listen to YouTube when I go running in the morning and I hear motivational speakers, Abraham Hicks is one of them. And there was a story of someone who was just relaxing and wanted to watch some TV and ended up watching like this zombie series. Mm -hmm. And really it, what she was focused on, this is a funny story, but this zombie series sort of affected her beliefs. And she started kind of looking around the world in a different way. Like yeah. are zombies come to get me and more so just out of fear uh, more paranoia, and all because of 
this one TV, TV show and, series. And what, what this, whether she didn't even know it, the beliefs that were starting to form inside of her based on seeing this TV series. And it's that easy. We form belief systems that easy. And that's the problem with it as a child. We take in yeah. everything. We have innocence. You know, we pop out of the womb and there really aren't any belief systems. But as we get to, you know, two, three, four years old, we start to listen, hear, see how people do things. And, and we, are, we have this innocence to us. Casey, you know this. You have children. Uh, they're still innocent to a, yeah. a large degree. But the thing is, when you look at the innocence that we have as human beings, even as adults, uh, we, we take in all of these things and we, yeah, we, so do. we believe some of it without question. And that was my concern for myself. It's like, holy moly, I've believed all of the things in my life, every bit, every yeah. single belief I believed without question until I became my late teens. And I started to question the religion that I was exposed to as a child and that I was forced into really as a child. Yeah. And I started to question a lot of things, you know, like heaven and hell. And I, I, started, I was like, what, wait a minute. Do I really believe that we're here on this earth for, you know, 50, 70, 80, 100 years maybe, and we're going to go to someplace called hell? And that was like, mm. and, you know, I'm not questioning that belief for you. You have every right to believe what you want to believe. Yeah. But, and then as I got older and I got into the law and I found this, this information on beliefs and I was reading books and workshops and I had mentors and coaches and uh, online workshops and stuff. And I'm like, uh, as I said before, I got aggravated. I was irritated wait a minute, why isn't anybody teaching this in a mass scale? Why aren't yeah. we being opened up to this? And so this is something that is so important in my life, your life, Casey, and everyone's yeah. life, lives that are listening to this because when you open up to this idea, there's a part of you that doesn't want to hear it. That there's a yeah. part of you, the psyche, the ego, whatever you want to call it, that doesn't want to change, that likes things the way they are, even though you personally don't like where you are in a lot of aspects of your life, it doesn't want to change. And so right. there may be some resistance to a lot of what, what we're talking about here in those episodes that we've already had. And then this episode, but I, I, I want to tell you that the people that push back on me that say, no, I don't believe that beliefs create my world, my reality, whatever you want to call it. That's the phrase that a lot of teachers use beliefs create your reality. Um, I say to them, that is exactly a belief system that you yeah. need to let go of. And so then I'm pretty good now after 12, 15 years of, of using this on myself and many years of using this with friends, family, uh, clients that work with me and, and um, just teaching it now. I'm really good at honing in on people's belief systems and I'm able to help them crack through a lot of this stuff. And, you know, Casey, you and I have cracked through a lot of your belief systems. Tell yeah. us a little bit about where this has taken you and and what, uh, what, your, what the impact of your life has been based on these ideas. Yeah, you know, particularly being a lawyer, uh, living in San Francisco, growing in my age, where I am, my generation, and so on, you know, you've got belief systems of everything from, from keeping up with the Joneses to, to issues around money, that it's, it's uh, a zero-sum game, to, you know, that you, uh, how to deal with your children, how to discipline them, and got to send them this certain path. Otherwise, they're not going to be ready for the world. You know, I've had these belief systems with, with kids, with, with relationships, with money, with everything. And a lot of them, uh, I think a lot of our readers and just kind of people in general will, will, uh, so will resonate with uh, that no pain, no gain, um, you know, the kids are, are to be seen, but not heard, you know, a lot of these that, that we've heard, and some of them are relics of, of 50, hundred years ago. Um, you know, it's bigger around patriotism, around, uh, presidential elections, around what's happening in the world where getting down when you see headlines in the media, uh, trusting the media and going to the news as like my one source of, of inspiration and really breaking that apart. And it was difficult for me to break it apart because it was part of my life. Um, you know, part wearing a colored shirt, it's part of who, you it's part it's of who part I am, of who you think you are anyways. That's right. It is. It's a big part of it. Um, wearing a colored shirt, uh, 
wearing a blazer to look professional, right? You know, just all these little things that, that I have. Now, that being said, I still teach my, my children to be respectful. Um, there's a lot being polite, um, to listen well. You know, there are definitely things that the golden rule that, that I think remain, but there was so much in there that, that just wasn't really helping me, causing me anxiety, uh, you know. what? And so when it comes to attorneys then, there's a lot of beliefs that we have. Um, you know, that uh, you have to climb up the firm corporate ladder, um, that, you know, clients are just always horrible and you got to slog through it. Uh, if you want to leave the law, the whole idea that, you know, you have to remain a lawyer because you spent so much money in law school, you know, and, and get your return on investment, um, the belief system right. that the only way you could be stature and have stature and so on is to keep that title as an attorney. Mm -hmm. There's all of these, you know, um, I'm not a marketer as an attorney. How can I really grow a business? I'm not a business person. Not a business person. I'm a I'm subject an matter expert. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm just an attorney on and on and on. And so, um, you know, it's all of these belief systems personally for attorneys who want to remain in the law and those who want to leave the law that, that remain there. And I've struggled with so many of them, but I'm, I'm at a point now just recognizing that what they are is they're not part of me. They're just these beliefs and I've been able to, to mitigate or, or reduce or eliminate many of them. Yeah. And it, it really basically is letting go. It's like taking a program out of your computer. Like we, Casey and I use Camtasia, it's called to do video editing in our computers. And, and so uh, when Camtasia three came out, I took Camtasia two out. And so it's like installing a new program. Cause that's all yeah. they are. They're programs, TV programming, computer program. Our mind is like a computer and our subconscious is where our ideas or our beliefs are stored. And it's just like taking a computer program it out. Is. I don't like this one. Let's put this one in. And there's a it process is. to this. And it's, it's an important process as far as I'm concerned, because it's really, um, it's the beginning stages of really looking at what do, what do you want to believe. And so let's talk about a few things and let's jump into some of these global beliefs that most yeah. of all of us have. I, I can probably guarantee you that every one of us listening, uh, has these beliefs, because if you didn't have these beliefs, you probably wouldn't be part of this community. You wouldn't need us, but 99% of humanity shares in these beliefs, unfortunately. And um, so let's talk about uh, starting to recognize what you believe. And part of it for me was uh, reading the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. He's uh, is a great book about the, the power of being in the present moment and what he said was, start to listen to the thoughts that you have, because when you realize that your thoughts are normally fear-based, they're, they're normally not good ones, they're usually judgment yeah. all the time, um, you'll start to hear some of your beliefs. And so as I listened to, or uh, read this book, Casey, I was like, listen to my thoughts. Holy moly. All right. This is probably about 15, 17 years ago, a long while back. And um, I started listening to my thoughts and I was like, oh, how is it that I'm saying these things to myself? Yeah. But as you become good at listening to your thoughts and you get into a place where you become what they call the observer uh, or the experiencer, it's a different term. It doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. You become observa or you become um, an observer of your thoughts and you start to then be able to question them in the moment this takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of practice. It is uh, a pattern that we aren't used to. And it's now become a habit for me to listen to my thoughts and shut my thoughts off. And you know, Casey and I were talking right before we hit record on this podcast about the idea uh, that you can stop your thoughts. And that's what yeah. being in the moment is about, is being present, just being here and now. And the power of now is a great place to start <laughs> with being present. Go ahead. And when I hear this uh, point about focusing on your thoughts, for me, it's like, it's like Iraq. It's issue spotting. Mm. I mean, you're really just saying, hold on, wait a minute. What's the fact pattern going on here? And that is, what's the issue here? And the issue is you're thinking that life is hard. You know, yes. you're thinking that the only way you can be productive is if you get on an airplane and go meet with clients. And it's not what you want to do, whatever it is, whatever this belief you have. And if you don't get on an airplane or if you don't go do that, you're failing and you're a failure and you're never going to be good. If that's your belief system, that's just an example. And so focus on that issue. Wait a minute, really? Do I really need to get on an airplane five times a month to be, to be worthy? 
No, 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 no. Hold on. So when you, I really view that as, as issue spotting, which so many of us are, are really good at. And the idea is to look inward on ourselves and really see what the issues are and then, and then assess and then change if you want. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a challenge, any kind of challenge in your life right now, um, get on the phone with me and in 15 minutes, we'll figure out what your belief systems are. Really I, I, I can tell you that I can hone in on these things very quickly because everybody that I know that has gone through and read my book, Raising the Bar and gone through the questions in there. And I make my consulting clients when I onboard them, go through these questions and, and, and yeah. answer them. Cause the most of us, we read a book and we don't do the exercises. It's like, why are you buying the book? If you're not going to implement these things, if you find ideas that you really like, like this, this isn't something yeah. to really like. This is something to integrate in your life. Yeah. Um, but go and start to question what you believe. If you have a challenge in your life, any kind of challenge, you don't have enough money, you don't think you're a marketer, you think life is hard, whatever it is, and we're going to get into some of these global beliefs uh, in, in, in a minute here. But let's say uh, you're not making enough money because a lot of the lawyers that we, Casey, that you and I talk with, they just don't make enough money. They don't have enough money. They don't make enough money. And, the, and to them... Uh, you know, having some money in the bank, having a really nice income is important. It's one of the reasons why they yeah. got into the law, right? And so uh, if you're not making enough money, why is that? Go into raising the bar, pull out those questions in yeah. word format. There's a link right in there where you can start to answer, question yourself and answer some of these questions about money, about business, about relationships, about uh, significant other, about all these areas in your life, the major areas in your life. Yeah. But once I began to question what I believed, is money hard to come by? Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been in a, a lot of instances in my life, but there's been a lot of instances where it has been hard to come by. Uh, is, is life difficult? Uh, it was for the majority of my life until I started finding this work and, and, and questioning what I believed about life in general, because I yeah. found that that belief that life is hard, let's start there. Let's start there with the, the global belief that all of us share. Life is difficult. Life is hard. And it runs downhill from there. Does not, Casey? Yeah. What did you say? Sorry. Does it not? I mean, we yeah, all yeah. have these beliefs, right? We all have these beliefs. Sorry, I went in and out there. Um, we all have these beliefs. And, um, you know, one thing for me was that idea that life is difficult, life is hard, no pain, no gain, and so on. And it was just the self-fulfilling prophecy. Like I, I, it then just became hard. It was harder and harder and harder. And, you know, I have realized that that's a belief that, that advertisers on Madison Avenue want and for me to buy stuff, or that's a belief that is coming from people who lived in a different generation, whether they're through the depression or through other areas, or it's just coming from people who, who just have that belief and, and that's what they, they, they're a martyr or they, they just feel that way. And I just said, you know what, that's, that's just not a belief that I want. And so it still comes to me and I still wrestle with it, but it's also something like um, it is easier. It's okay for life to be easy. It's okay for it to flow. It's okay to, to be in the zone, you know, and uh, we think about athletes or we think about people who are just, who just really have it, who just, it's connecting for them. And instead of being jealous of them or saying, ah, they just had an extra advantage. I said, well, why not? Like it can happen. Um, and so it, it's taken me to kind of direct my thoughts to, to look at it in a different way. Well, when you, let's talk about athletes because I played college basketball. And one of the things my mother taught me when I was in high school was to start to visualize the shots going in. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, going out and practicing it. And so yeah. why, uh, you know, we, we just had your, your team, the golden state warriors win the uh, NBA championship. Why is right. Kevin Durant so good? Why is LeBron yeah. James so good? Yes, they've got physical attributes that help them, yeah. but without practicing, yeah. without going out and practicing, what's, what, what is practice? It's getting the basics down. Every year we would start basketball, especially even in the higher levels like college. It's all about the basics. Yeah. And the way you can release limiting beliefs in sports, golf, basketball, tennis, any of it, is to go out and practice. It's repetition yeah. of the same thing over and over until you believe in that backstroke, backstroke, you believe in that jump shot because it's been ingrained in your mind to the point where it's not difficult anymore. Because 
Right. I remember when I started playing basketball at age 12, it wasn't very easy for me. Yeah. But when I got to college, by that time, high school and college, it became fun and easy. Yeah. And it was like I was on autopilot. And that's really where my life has gone with most of my belief systems. And clearly, yeah. we all have belief systems that need to be unpacked. And I continue to unpack some of mine. Um, but for the majority of every aspect of my life, I am in the ideal, moving towards a better life in all areas. And so, and, and I look at our skills, you know, you look at Kevin Durant shooting a ball or you look at an actor doing something greater, whoever that we look at. But when we look at ourselves as attorneys, you know, you think about the stuff that we've practiced, whether it's public speaking, whether it's writing an argument, whether it's putting a paragraph together, whatever it is, we're really, really good at this. And yeah. so visualizing success, visualizing bringing that person in, visualizing uh, the, the, the winning argument or just visualizing a happy client, you know, we can do this. It's, it's what gets in the way. I mean, if Kevin Durant or LeBron James or any actor, or anyone gets on stage or gets on the field and is thinking like, Oh God, I hope I don't, I hope I don't make a mistake. I hope I don't make a mistake. Well, they're going to make a mistake. It's the doubt that creeps in when you don't have yeah. a firm belief in something that causes right. life to be hard and difficult. But this global belief, life is hard runs and permeates every aspect of our lives. Every really single don't. one is our relationships. Are they difficult? Do we have shitty clients? Do we have clients that don't pay? Do we have a hard time making money? Do we have a health challenge? Do we have excess weight on our body? Do we have yeah. the amount of energy that we want for our lives? It, it really stems to my research when you look at the United States is the Protestant belief of the work ethic. Yeah. Uh, you've got to work hard in life. And that permeates everything in our lives. I don't care what religion you follow, where, what you were born into, those beliefs are part of the ecosystem that we call the United States, and they permeate the whole world, really. Unless and Hobbes, you know, the, the English professor Hobbes, is a, what life is uh, in the 1600s, you know, brutish and short. Um, and it's, it's just, he was saying what other people had said, and it's continued from that. It has con continued because nobody takes a look at it and says, wait a minute, I don't want to believe, believe that life is hard. Right. I don't want to have a difficult time making money because money's just energy and money flows to people that open up to new belief systems. And what I understand through shifting my belief systems about money and every, everything in my life is that when you start to shift your beliefs, your brain starts to see evidence, your, your subconscious yeah. and, and your, even your uh, yeah. your regular mind, your conscious mind, it starts to see evidence of the new belief systems and it, begins to then find the ideas, the people, places, and things become a reality. And it opens up to making more money, to a better relationship with your spouse, significant other, with your children, to the idea of attracting perfect clients yeah. and all of it. And, but it starts with some inner work. And, um, but ultimately, when you look at life is hard, difficult, whatever you want to call it, um, it doesn't have to be. And so just hearing what we're talking about today, starting to understand that you can start to question what you believe and asking yourself, do I really think that life is hard? Sit down with a piece of paper or your computer and begin to have a dialogue with this idea. Yeah. And it, you can call it automatic writing, you can call it journaling, doesn't really matter, but start to write down, what do you believe about life in yeah. all aspects? And if you have yeah. a certain challenge in your life that you're uh, having a problem with, then start to say, what do I believe about this challenge and that aspect of my life? And that will start you on a path of exploration to understanding uh, where the disconnect is, where you, yeah. I don't want to say went wrong because it's part of your path. And I don't believe there's anything wrong with any of our past because in the end, when you look at the challenges that we've had, all of us individually, those challenges have made us who we are. And when you and, are, op open quote, able to overcome a challenge, which is just basically letting go of yeah. the belief system that you had about it and looking, maybe looking at it in a different perspective, then it flows to you in a different way. When you have a different perspective on things, your energy shifts. And it might sound a little strange, but it's true. It's happened in it so is. many areas of my life. It's, and you know, it's interesting. I, do this. You can focus on where these beliefs come from, our parents or media or whatever, and and that gives some light. But 
doing that exercise, Adam, I wouldn't really look backwards and look at, you know, try and undercover where this came from. If it's helpful, sure, but really it's just a focus of it. The important part is to focus on how do I, what do I think about life? Is it hard or is it easy? And if you really believe that it is hard, it needs to be hard, it's brutish and short, then just start feeling how the opposite feels to you. That's how does right. this sound to you? So if you say, okay, life is hard and brutish. I, I believe no pain, no gain. Yeah. Okay. That is what my belief is. So then start saying to yourself, well, how does it feel for me to say, I, I get in the zone. Life just flows for me. Right. Um, things connect for me. Um, clients really appreciate me. Money just starts flowing in at a, at a nice pace. Um, uh, people connect with me. Uh, and then when you have challenges, challenges, it's not that you don't have challenges or that someone doesn't cut you off in traffic. That happens. The, the, the grape juice gets spilled on the white carpet, hmm. but it's more of it's okay. Life is fine. And maybe it's a sign that I just cleaned it up. Maybe it's, a, it's more of you're able to deal with the bumps as opposed to um, saying that, throwing up your hands and saying, oh, life is horrible. But also this, this is not a belief that there's never any bumps. It's just you're looking at the bumps differently. It's, it's just not a big That's deal. Right. Or it's a way to connect. Maybe you have a laugh about, about the grape juice. Maybe the grape juice falling on the carpet or the client firing you or the cutoff in traffic inspires some creativity. Maybe now you write a novel or a short story about the grape juice falling on the carpet that gets published and you tap into a whole new side of your brain. You know, it's, it's viewing it like that as opposed to life is hard, grape juice just fell on the white carpet, I'm going to yell at my child, but more of wait a minute, what is this telling me? What's the opportunity? How should I build on this? Which is either just, hey, let it go. Or maybe I read a short story about grape juice falling on a white carpet. Well, what happens if um, it's you that drops the grape juice on the carpet and not your well, kid? Well, yeah. And <laughs> That's a good question. The other point is don't yeah. call myself an idiot. Don't have a belief system that, see, I'm, I'm not worthy and I'm so clumsy and I'm this, but rather just say, hey, it happened. It happened. That's all. And, and, and in another episode, after we've got some interviews here, we're going to dive into one of these global beliefs that you're not worthy to make the kind of money that you want to make, that you, yeah. you're not worthy to have the kind of relationship that you want to have with your significant other or, or have a relationship with someone that you really care about or whatever it is. Yeah. That's something that stems and flows from life is difficult. So when we get into some of these episodes down the road where we start to uncover and unpack these, uh, other global beliefs um, and limitations that we have in us, that that's going to be a big one, the unworthiness. Yeah. Every single uh, consulting client I've ever dealt with or even friend that I've coached, uh, they have that in them. And I've, right. I've had it in me and, and it continues to pop up every once in a while so often. Um, this is a process, right? It's, it is really? a process. And the fact of the matter is, if you can just be more present to the actual moment and don't get pissed off at yourself for for uh, spilling the grape juice or your kid or whatever. It, it, it is, it's what happened. And so just move forward with it as best you can. And I think that's one of the big life lessons is just to be present and understand what's in the path is the path. There's a whole book on that that I read, this woman yeah. wrote years ago. And what is in the path is the path. So the more we can begin to stop resisting yeah. the path in the moment, right. the more we can just flow that's the key for me. I just want to, I want life to flow and whatever yeah. comes is here for a reason. Yeah. Unpack it, let it go. And so let me go back to one thing you said, and then we'll end this episode. So we don't take everybody's too much of everybody's time because we want to get you in and out in some of these, cause we know you're busy, but uh, let's unpack the idea of when you start to find these belief systems, what do you do then? What do, you, mm -hmm. what do you do with a belief that pops up and, and you ask yourself the question, do I believe life? Do I believe life is hard or, or do I believe that money is hard to come by? And you say yes to that and you say, yeah. yes, I, this is what I believe because I'm not making the kind of money that I really want to make. Well, right. what does it feel like to feel and, and think the total opposite belief of that? What, what does it feel like to feel in yourself the idea that money is easy to come by? that will start to open you up to what you believe about money. You'll start to yeah. hear it in your minds, in your minds, in your ear, in whatever you want to call it, in, in your brain, whatever it is. Um, you'll start to hear what it is. Money yeah. is easy to come by. You'll, and I heard, uh, that's bullshit. 
you got to work really hard for money. You got to work 15 hour days, 10 hour days, 12 hour, blah, 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 blah. You got to sweat and toil and the burden of all of it. And I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. <clears throat> no, no, there's people out there that, you know, the four hour work week guy brought, came out with the book. How do you work, do a four hour work week? Well, I reduce it from 15 hours to about a two hour work day. Yeah. Um, you can have a four hour work week if you believe in it. I'm working with some consulting clients that want to move to a two hour day yeah. and they just don't believe it yet because we're working in, in, in a new level where they're, they're newer to me as clients. But ultimately I went through all that stuff personally yeah. and realized I don't need to work in an office and come in a suit or even, uh, you know, I can work at home in my shorts and a t-shirt. Nobody knows where I am. And with a cell phone, you know, if I need to, if I ever needed to come into the office, I did. And I yeah. would usually wear khakis, sometimes jeans. I don't particularly care what people think of me. I, I'm there to help them with their solutions. I'm not there to impress them by the way I dress. And so, you know, when I go out and talk still, I'll throw on a suit because that's what people align with, especially us as, yeah. you know, attorneys. This is what you align with uh, is the suit. and tie. I don't wear, I've worn a tie in a long time. But, but um, the fact is, if you ever see me live, which some of you will, if I'm in jeans and a, and a shirt like I've got on or even a polo shirt, uh, deal with it because I want you to be able to work from home in your shorts and a t-shirt exactly. if you feel like it, if you want to, if you want to have that relaxed flow in your life, then figure out a way to get there, reverse engineer it. And one way to do this is that if you are feeling that money is, is difficult to come by, think about beliefs about other things you have that are easy. So, yes. you know, if you're very healthy, and you just are in great shape or you can just eat anything. You know, you have a belief system that you're just healthy. Um, many of us have a belief system, we're going to live a really long life. Uh, many of us have a belief system that walking into a room of strangers at a networking event, not a big deal. I can schmooze with anybody and have fun doing it and be sincere and authentic. You know, there's a lot of things that you, that we are really good at and um, don't even think twice about. And it just, we just connect with it. It just aligns. You know, believe it or not, there is a lot that just flows to you. We all shake our heads and say money and say, well, that's impossible. There's no way I can get money just just flowing into my bank account. But think about all the other things that happen to you where it does flow, whether it's health, whether it's, it's the ability to eat, eat, eat whatever you want, whether it's the ability to connect with people, whether it's the ability to write, whether it's the ability to, uh, to light up a room, or whether it's the ability to cook, whether the ability to put on events, to the, be the glue in a situation, to be liked, and on and on and on. And so when you think about that, there are so many instances where you, yeah, you flow and you're just in the zone and you just connect well right? you're right me, and that yeah and that's because you have a belief system that that you can do it lastly let's end on this note because i think it's important i i love what you just said casey and i think it's a great idea but i I'll, i want to take it one step forward if you're not making the kind of money you want to make if you're not uh as healthy as you want to be whatever it is if, if you're not the weight you want to be at why don't you have a little bit of gratitude for where you are because I can guarantee yeah. you can find something to be grateful for where you are. Because most of us, if we don't have the kind of money we want, we're making the, the money we need. Be yeah. grateful that you have enough money to pay your bills. Be grateful that you can breathe and that you're, you're, you have an opportunity to create your life how you want. So a lot of this, the resistance we have to what is, can be shifted to just being grateful for where you are right That's now. Right. And so if you Want to reach out to me, EsquireAcademy.com. Casey is LeaveLawBehind.com. Go to our websites. Check out what we give away. It changes different, different times of the year and stuff like that. But we both have some things that we, we want to give you uh, outside of this podcast because this podcast is a big thing and takes a lot of our time and costs us a lot of money. But we have these things that we give away, teachings that we give away for you to help you grow. And so go check out our websites, whichever path you're wanting to take a look at, maybe look at both paths because uh, in some instances people are on the fence and they don't know whether they yeah. should leave or not or they should stay. But the fact is you need to make an educated decision, whatever you do, and one of us can help you to make that educated right. decision. So if you have an inkling that you want to leave the law, Casey offers, if you haven't already taken him up on this, a 15-minute free consultation to discuss with you uh, the possibilities for working with him and 
and the possibilities for you leaving the law. And so I, I want you to take him up on that if you have any inkling that it's like, oh, you know, I just, I don't know of anything that I really want to do in the law and I'm kind of done, I'm over it. And yeah, Adam, you're saying some good things, some things that I could use to open my own business or to go out into the world and do other things, but man, I just really need to connect with Casey. Then do it. Stop procrastinating and start to move towards the ideal. So we appreciate you being here. If you haven't signed up on uh, loveorleavepodcast.com, uh, you're going to find that we're going to start doing some free training on that if you're a member of that website. And, uh, but jump into Casey's website and become part of his community because he, he does do um, some free videos often and gives away a lot of different stuff, as do I. But let's focus on Casey today because I, I know a lot of you here listening just aren't sure what to do, and uh, he can definitely help you. So we appreciate you being here. Check us out in whatever form there is. If you have not listened to those episodes on the three episodes that we recorded on beliefs and the general stuff, uh, getting started with that, go back and listen to them again. Yeah. Check out my book called Raising the Bar, where there is questions to start eliciting those beliefs in you, amazon.com, or you can go to Raising the Bar book.com. So thanks for being with us. We'll see you in the next episode. We've got some really cool interviews coming next yeah. uh, and we're, we appreciate you. So Casey, any parting thoughts? That's it, everybody. Thank you. We're here to help. Um, this is what we love doing and I uh, really appreciate you being part of the community and, and take the step. There's a lot of baby steps that we have here on our respective sites, small baby steps, almost risk-free that can really start building momentum. Take the step. That's it. All right, everybody. Take Bye care. now.